this could happen in less than like 72 hours or so. Yeah. But we want to speak with an expert. We have Dr. Mm -hmm. Andy Hazelton, the associate scientist at the University of Miami, joining us this morning. It was great to hear what you had to say over the weekend as well. You laid out the different scenarios mm -hmm. on X. And Dr. Hazelton, I'm curious from your perspective, you had a, you've had a chance to look over the most current models this morning. Any changes from what you saw yesterday to today? I think we're still um, kind of in the same boat where we're trying to narrow down the possibilities. It does look like it's getting its act together, maybe even a little bit quicker than expected. And so I think some of those scenarios of a weaker system just heading straight west toward Nicaragua is probably kind of unlikely now. I think we're probably either going to see um, a storm that forms more quickly and turns right away toward Hispaniola, or maybe takes a little bit of time to get together and then um, kind of meanders south of Jamaica over the very warm Caribbean. So maybe narrowing down the possibilities a little bit, but there's still a lot of uncertainty as to what areas might be impacted by this. Yeah, it has been interesting to see the evolution. I believe that I was even able to catch up with you, Andy, on Friday, if I'm remembering correctly. But Friday was really one of the first days we started to see at least the Google AI models. The AI models pick up on that northward northeastern turn towards the island of Hispaniola. Um, but the NHC this morning put up, you know, increasing the chance of development over the next two days as well as the next seven days. So it does feel like things are progressing. Um, but obviously, I guess until we get at least that close circulation of the surface, um, some of these models go out to seven days to 10 days to maybe seeing anything truly impactful for some of these islands. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of the uncertainty is from, you know, whether this is going to be a, a more shallow system that's steered by the trade winds or if it gets um, vertically aligned and deeper quickly, it might feel that, that trough and get picked up across the island of Hispaniola. Um, and so, you know, really once once we see where the center is trying to consolidate and and once we see how quickly it's developing, getting aligned, that'll probably tell us which of these two solutions is more likely um, over the next couple of days. But um, certainly I think we'll have a tropical storm here by, you know, midweek, if not if not sooner. And you know, either way, um, if it goes north, you're probably going to get, um, you know, potentially a hurricane and a lot of flooding over Haiti and Dominican Republic, um, very vulnerable to flooding with the mountains. And then if it does um, take longer you know, to develop, if it does turn west, then you have a storm that's going to be over the um, some of the warmest water in the world um, right now and very deep warm water you know, with, with several days to develop and then probably eventually turning in toward Jamaica or Cuba. And so. Um, unfortunately, once the storm gets to the Caribbean, it, it's hard to avoid hitting somebody. So um, we'll just have to kind of watch and, and see how quickly he develops and how things evolve. Yeah, there's there's literally land surrounding all of mm -hmm. the Caribbean, as you can see, and it can't reverse its way back out, unfortunately. You know, and let me get your perspective. You mentioned there's, again, the two different scenarios. I just want to kind of take mm -hmm. them piece by piece. Let's just hypothetically say it follows the, you know, what the UK model is suggesting where it does hang out in the Western Caribbean a little longer. Walk me through some of the ingredients that could set the stage for perhaps possibly a more powerful hurricane as opposed to if it just took the sharp right or sharp uh, northerly trajectory. Yeah, because if it, if it goes west, it'll have, you know, up, upwards of probably a week or more over over the um, Caribbean. And especially if it then, you know, stays a little bit north of Honduras, you'd have, you know, seven to 10 days perhaps. And the water there is, um, you know, 85, 86, 87 Fahrenheit. It's very deep. So even if a hurricane were to sit in one spot for a while, it would just be churning up more warm water. It wouldn't be um, really cooling itself at all. The upper level winds are very light, which means there's not going to be much shear. Moisture looks high. So pretty much all the ingredients are there to get a major hurricane, uh, maybe even a strong major hurricane if, if you have a storm over water long enough. Um, and so that's why, you know, if you look at like the Google AI solutions, you know, it's kind of split. One, one camp is um, turning quickly toward the Dominican Republic and, and Haiti. And we certainly could see a strong storm. But I think if you get that track further west, you could, that's where you could really see some of your uh, higher end potential for this to become a category four or, or even higher um, if it stays over water long enough. Yeah, and then I guess in terms of the other scenario with that turn to the northeast, I'd say, you know, for the U.S. mainland, when you look just in that window of time over the next 10 days, it looks like the trough would hopefully help keep things away from the U.S. mainland, but then still looking at Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, which I guess would still be too close to call at this point. But I'm trying to think, too, you know, Michael brought up, you know, you get these mountainous islands like the island of Hispaniola, and any system passing over that would be very disruptive to see what would come out on the other side. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, what, 
have to see kind of how the, the pattern evolves over the U.S., whether you get a system that just sort of quickly recurves out to the northeast or maybe tries to bend a little bit to the north. Um, that's always something we watch for with these big troughs, um, you know, coming down. And um, obviously, yeah, as, you know, history tells us and the, the model setup suggests that, you know, long term, it's hard to get anything very deep into the Gulf this time of year. Um, stuff tends to turn across Cuba or maybe uh, very extreme, you know, the Florida Straits, things like that. Um, but so, you know, something to watch for here in South Florida, and certainly, you know, there's people that um, this time of year, um, it's, you know, really the tourist season cranks up, you have cruises in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, and those are all areas that are going to need to be um, kind of on the alert for this uh, over the next 10 days or so. All right, I'll let you have the last word here. Do you think that this may mark the end of the Atlantic hurricane season after the mm -hmm. system? Yeah, I never want to totally rule anything out, but right now um, we just had a big pulse of rising air. Um, the MJO is what we call it, move through. So that's sort of what set the stage for, for this potential system. After this, it looks like things get a little bit less favorable. Um, and as we get into November, it just gets harder to, to get stuff with the jet stream coming down. Can't rule anything out, but at least certainly in terms of, you know, potential big impacts and things we have to watch in the U.S., hopefully this is it. I think I'd be okay with that. I think Same. I'd be okay if Same. we can keep Melissa not getting whatever is Melissa, which would likely be this, mm -hmm. um, not causing too much damage, and then we close the books on the season. But Hopefully. we still have, what, to the end of November to go. Mm -hmm. We'll see what Mother yeah. Nature throws at us. Always appreciate you tuning in on the conversation or joining in on the conversation. Dr. Andy Hazelton, Associate Scientist at the University of Miami. Thank you. Thank you.